Today, we're talking about perspective. Using perspective is a way to add space to our artwork. Space is one of the seven elements of art. Perspective is an art technique that changes the distance or depth of objects or scenes on a flat surface, like on paper or canvas. More specifically today, we are talking about linear perspective. Linear perspective is a system of creating an illusion of depth on a flat surface. All the lines in a painting or drawing come together in a single point called a vanishing point on the horizon line. The root word in linear is line. Do you see that? And linear perspective is all about lines. Let me explain a little more. The horizon line is the line that is created when the sky meets the land or water. That is called the horizon or horizon line. The word horizontal comes from horizon. We talk about horizontal a lot when we make lines or figure out which direction to make our paper. The vanishing point is a spot on the horizon where it seems like all the lines and angles in the picture meet. Linear perspective was first discovered in the early 1400s by an architect named Filippo Brunelleschi. He was the architect that designed the cathedral in Florence, Italy. Brunelleschi observed that with a fixed single point of view or vanishing point, parallel lines appear to converge at a single point in the distance. In a famous noted experiment, Brunelleschi used mirrors to sketch the Florence baptistry in perfect perspective. Soon, artists were using Brunelleschi's method of perspective to create more realistic paintings. You see, before Brunelleschi's discovery, paintings appeared flat, with no depth or space. Look at this mosaic from the medieval time period. Figures in the mosaic are overlapped, meaning one in front of the other, but they are all the same size and look very flat with no real focal point. After artists started using Brunelleschi's method of linear perspective, paintings appeared more dynamic and realistic. Like this one by Masaccio. This is the first known painting to use linear perspective. It is called the Holy Trinity and was painted in 1427. Do you see how the lines in the painting come to one point below the cross? That's why it is called linear perspective. The lines come together at a vanishing point or focal point. Our eyes focus then on one particular spot. Now, more recent artists also use linear perspective in their artwork. Here is an artist you have heard of before, Vincent Van Gogh. And here's his painting called Cafe Terrace at Night, painted in 1888. Do you see how the buildings get smaller in the distance? We could draw a line down the top of the buildings and a line up from the street, and the lines would meet at a vanishing point on the horizon line. Here is another painting of snow in New York by Robert Henry in 1902. Again, if we draw lines on the street and down the tops of the buildings, they would meet in the center at the vanishing point. And finally, this is a painting by Edward Hopper called Chop Suey from 1929. This is a view inside the building. So it's a smaller space, but the concept is still the same. The lines will converge at a vanishing point and it creates the feeling that we are actually sitting in this restaurant with the other people. It creates depth and space. We are going to be using this concept of linear perspective today to create a painting. For our inspiration, we'll be looking at these tulip fields in Holland. Holland, also called the Netherlands, is a country in Europe known for its tulips, windmills, art, trade, and culture. The country is very flat. There are not many mountains. So it's a great way for us to see the horizon line and vanishing point, especially because of the rows of tulip fields. Look at this picture. All of the rows come together 
into one point on the horizon line. And here is a picture of one of their famous windmills. The windmill is right on the vanishing point that's on the horizon line. Again, here is another with a windmill and see how all of the lines come together at that one point. I think it's amazing and the colors are incredible. We're going to try to recreate this today using a technique called pointillism, where we will use small dots to make our paintings. So what are we waiting for? Let's get started. Hey friends, Joseph is gonna help us today with our project. Yeah. <laughs> it's going to be a perspective painting in the style of pointillism. Yep. So we're learning one point perspective and we're going to be making tulip fields from Holland. So are you ready to paint some tulip fields in one point perspective? Are you sure? All right. All right, for today, you need a piece of square paper that I'll give you and a pencil. You need a piece of scrap paper that we're going to fold to make um, a straight edge. So i uh, give you each a piece of scrap paper and you can fold it. This is gonna be our straight edge. You can also use a ruler, but because we don't wanna share supplies, um, we're just gonna use a folded piece of paper and see how this edge is real straight. That's what we can use to run our pencil along and it works the same way as a ruler. So we have a pencil, we have our straight edge ruler, sort of. Um, we have Q-tips that we'll use for the pointillism technique. And we have a plate of paint. So the first thing we're going to do is draw our horizon line. Now horizon line is the line that where the sky meets the land. That's where we get the word horizontal. A horizontal line goes from left to right. And, and that's what the horizon does. It goes like this. Now that's vertical. Oh, yeah, good. Horizontal is this way, left oh, to right. That's the right. So we're gonna line up, we're gonna put our piece of folded paper for our ruler um, on top of our project paper. And wherever you want your horizon line to be, it can be up a little higher, it can be down a little lower, or it can be right in the middle. I'm gonna make mine up a little higher because I wanna see more of the tulip fields versus more of the sky. That'll be too high, Joseph. So I'm just gonna hold my, my folded paper down along my project paper and I'm gonna take my pencil and Draw along that edge like I'd be drawing along a ruler. Good job. Now what we have to do is, this is the horizon line, and on the horizon line, we have to pick a point. And that's going to be what we call the vanishing point. So we're going to pick a point along the horizon line and just draw a dot. So I'm going to put mine right there. Put mine right here. Okay. That's our vanishing point. Okay, now all of the lines for the tulip fields are going to connect to that vanishing point. So all we have to do to draw the lines for our tulip fields is hold the edge of that folded paper at the vanishing point and then wherever we want a line to be, we, we can draw it. So we're gonna start at the vanishing point and run along that paper and draw a line. It's just like a wound. Now it just looks like a, a, an angle line. Yep, it's just like a ruler. Good job. Now I'm gonna move my paper, but remember that it all connects to the vanishing point. So I'm gonna keep one, one edge of my paper at the vanishing point, then I can just rotate my paper wherever I want it. So I'm gonna put another line like that, draw another line, and now, oh, it's kind of like a sun ray. Okay, yep, hold it at the vanishing point. And then draw all the way down and off your paper. Good job, all the way up, good job.
That looks awesome, Joseph. Good job. That looks like tulip fields. Now in Holland, often you'd see a, a windmill at the at the vanishing point. So if you want, we can draw a little windmill. It's just going to be like a shape like that. And then it has four kind of propellers. You always make sure you draw a little dot in the middle. Mm -hmm. Like that. Yep. Then you take the then you just make four four lines coming out of it. Okay, now we're going to paint it and we're going to use our Q-tips. We're going to paint it in the pointillism style. So it's just going to be dots okay. of paint. But look, the tulip fields had different colors. Um, different colors. So you have to do you have to do each one a different color. You're right, but they're all the flower colors. So yellow and red and pink and purple and orange. So I'm gonna start with orange. So you also need some um, more green. We also need some pink. So I'm gonna make this one orange, and I'm just gonna start by making dots. Like a pumpkin. Straight up and down. Like a pumpkin. Right? Mm -hmm. Like this, straight like up and down. Like one pumpkin. Mm. We're done with our fields, and now what we have to do is add a little bit of green um, for the stems of the tulips. So I'm going to get green on a clean Q-tip, and along those lines that I we made originally, I'm just going to put a little bit of green in between the lines for the tulip fields. You want to make sure that when you do the green, it's really just along those lines. Now that you're done with the tulip field, it's time to do the windmill in the sky. So you can get a another Q-tip, and we're going to get a little bit of black, and the black is going to be for the windmill. We're just going to do a little bit of black along the windmill, the, those four lines and the windmill part. And now we can do the sky. So you just switch it around. Like you this? want to do your lines, buddy, for the one the lines of the windmill too with black. Now I'm gonna use some regular blue and I'm also gonna mix some blue into my white. And that way I can have a little bit of lighter blue as well for the sky. So and I can use both dark blue and light blue and just mix it all up, okay? So I'm going to do a bunch of dots all over the place, not going right up to that windmill, but not over top of it, all the way down to the horizon line. Kind of covering up that horizon line with the blue dots now. And then as... I'm using that lighter blue, and then as I get closer to the top of the page, then I'll add some of the dark blue. Alright, I think I'm done. Um, Joseph says he's done, but I think he could get fill in a little bit more there's a lot of white areas so he's going to work on filling in more of his with more color because we want it to be nice and full of tulip fields and sky and we don't want to see a lot of white showing through so I'm going to even fill in some of mine a little bit more as well okay let's work on filling it in a little bit more and then um, and then we'll be done